It seems, if you can believe the White House, that there is a hostage deal very close to being made between Israel and Hamas, negotiated by, well, everybody in the Middle East, it seems. But if you want to know why the deals keep failing and why Hamas keeps pulling out, we have a video to show you what they really think and what their cause is really all about. It's no wonder they don't want a deal. Let's start off with talking about what the White House has announced both yesterday and today, which is they, the Biden White House, I don't know if Biden has anything to do with this, to be quite <laughs> blunt, uh, are putting intense pressure on Israel to accept the latest ceasefire deal. The last five or six of them have been presented, negotiated in Doha, Qatar and also in Cairo, Egypt. The head of the security apparatus in Israel is there. The United States has representatives, obviously Egypt. The terrorists have people there. The deal is very, very close. And the reason Israel wants it so badly is they want to get out the remaining hostages before they're all killed by Hamas in the tunnels under Gaza. The question arises, why do these deals never happen? Why do they get like that close? And then Hamas walks away and the United Nations is mad at Hamas and the United States and Israel's in a panic because more and more of their citizens are dying. Look, we've got, I think there's eight Americans supposedly still alive in those tunnels. America wants them back. And Hamas just keeps the killing going. The war would end in five minutes if they let everybody go, but they have it. The question is why? I'm going to show you a video released by Hamas that mm. will explain it. Wallahi, if we took the Jews from Palestine, if we took them from Palestine, and we took them from the house of the Holy Spirit, without them to sleep, or if they went to the end of the world, we will see them, and we will invite them to Islam, and we will invite them to the house of Islam, and we will invite all the Nasara to Islam. Yes. نعم ديننا دين الرحمة نعم أنا أوصي أولا يعني الإخوة المجاهدين في سرايا القدس أن يستمروا في عملهم المقاوم نحن لا نحب الحياة نحن طلقنا الدنيا بالثلاثة نحن الذين عمروا آخرتهم You see the translation on the bottom I'll, I'll translate for you from what I read that we don't love life. This is the Hamas terrorist talking. We are preparing for the afterlife. Their religion has taught them that if they die fighting the Christians and Jews, they will go to paradise. So what he says is we will hunt down and kill all the Jews and we will call the Christians to Islam. And if they don't come, we will kill them too. It's a lovely religion. I, religion is, is not the right word. They are an apocalyptic, vicious, Nazi-like terror organization. I guess the difference is the Nazis wanted to live. These people want to die. So, Will, theoretically, how do you make peace with somebody? How do you stop a war with somebody who says, I'm going to kill you, Christians and Jews, and I hope I die when I'm doing that, because that's my ticket to paradise. How do you make peace with them? Join them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to join them and then convert. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the only, and that's what they want. I mean, right? That's what they want. But obviously, we're not going to do that because we love life. We, we, we know that we're blessed with the life that God gave us, and we want to cherish it with our friends and our families. I mean, that is the opposite of what they want. We recognize how totally, beautiful this is. You would make a total crappy Muslim with attitude like that. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. But you know what, Barry? I, I, I brought this up before, that they have this thing in their mind. I guess, I don't know if it's part of their religion, what have you, but they believe in suffering. They believe that they need to suffer. They believe they need to be in pain. They they believe this, right? They need they need to cause chaos. They need to live in chaos. And all the people that surround them, they need to feel pain and live in chaos as well. So then that way they can use their pain and their chaos to anger them, to push an agenda, 
to get them to fight against a, a group of people, whoever it is that they select, you know, that day of the week or whatever have you. But they believe that miserable, being miserable is the way that they should be. Because I, I'm i looking at it. To give an example of what made me came up with this, looking at it from the outside looking in, is that here Israel dropping leaflets saying, hey, get out of harm's way. Here's Israel providing water. You we talked about it. Here's Israel providing energy. Here's Israel providing food. And what happens? Hamas, they charge the people for all of the free resources that they're receiving from Israel. And then when the people try to get food for themselves, you have Hamas killing them. They want them to live in misery. They want them to live that way because then it's a control mechanism at the same time. If people have food, if people have water, if people have a job, they're not dependent. It kind of like it sounds like I'm talking about the Democrat Party here in America. <laughs> it sounded familiar. It really did. I mean, really. You, it's you the same tactic. The name. <laughs> it's the same and, tactic. And, yeah, I totally get it. The next time somebody asks you, why is there no peace in Gaza? Show them that video. That's from Hamas. Yeah. In their own words, unbelievable.